Hello, Super users. So today we're going to be continuing with the second episode of the Coding with JW Lewis series. And just a quick reminder, in addition to all these videos, I am creating content on Upnote that mirrors everything that we do here on the video. That way you can reference it for later. Or if you prefer to learn by reading um, articles online, you can learn it that way. But back to the task at hand. So last time, if you may remember, we used this online coding editor and we learned some uh, basic Lua things. Like we learned how to define variables like uh, my var equals one, or you can say like my var equals two. We also learned about different booleans. That's true and false. We also learned that you could type in strings. Like this is a string using the two curly quotes, or you can type in a string with single quotes. This is a single quotes string. We also learned that after you've defined a variable, you can use the print function to print it out. So we can print out my var and hit run and it comes over here. Finally, ended off with some for loops and for loops being different ways we can run blocks of code. So we learned uh, this syntax for for loop. Um, and then we're gonna say print i, and then we're gonna hit end, where it's gonna print one through 10 like this. So today we're gonna build off of these concepts and build a simple JW Lewis script that changes the no heads in every note for a selection. So we're gonna learn a different type of for loop today, but the idea still stays the same if you're gonna repeat a block of code. So instead of iterating through every single number from one to 10 using a variable i, we're gonna iterate through a new type of object that is called a table. Now, what is a table? Well, a table you define just like any other variable. So we can say my table equals, and then we're gonna use curly braces. And then inside these curly braces, we can put whatever data types you want. So we could put a string, so that's a string one, comma, string two, or we could put in several different numbers like one, two, three, four, five, or we can even do the numbers out of order like three, one, four, one, five, nine. And if we really wanted to, we can actually mix data types. So then we could say, this is as easy as pi. And so what this table is doing is it's basically taking all this data and grouping it together. And then, well, because we have a bunch of values, we can actually iterate over these values. So we can create a special type of for loop called a for in loop, where we basically say for every value in table, do something. So let's do it. So we're gonna delete all this numbers and i stuff, and we're gonna say for key comma value in pairs of my table. And then instead of print i, we're gonna print value. And let's see what happens. We get 314159, this is easy as pi. And this is the basic concept of a for in loop. Now, JW Lua has its own specific version, so I'm not gonna go into great detail about the syntax of this for in loop, but I will link to another video in the description that gives you more of an idea of what is exactly going on here. So without further ado, let's go into JW Lua and make sure you already have JW Lua installed. If you don't, you can see my video on that linked in the description. You're just gonna come over here, go to the development tab, and then here it should say untitled.lua. And we're just gonna click plugin definition and give it a name like my test plugin. Yay, and hit okay. Uh, all that does is set it up that way the actual script runs properly. And then under here from line seven or below, we can put in whatever code we want. So we could say print hello world like we did before, just like that and hit run script and it prints hello world or any other code we wanted. So we could actually uh, copy all this over here like that and run script and it works just as expected. Now we're gonna create the JW Lua style of for loop. And so this is gonna loop through every single um, note entry in a highlighted section, highlighted section being like this. So to do that, I'm just gonna delete all this code and type in for entry in each entry saved of thin end dot region do and of course we end a for loop with the end and we're gonna say print this is a note like that and if we were to run the script we'd see that we get no output because there's nothing selected over here so let's uh, go and cr real quickly and add in a couple notes like that highlight it and hit run script and we see this is a note and we get it for every single one. So that's really cool. We're looping through different notes. And so let's break this down real quickly. So thin env region, that's thin env stands for finale environment. And we're just finding the region that is currently selected. 
each entry saved tells JW Lua to go through every single entry in the selected region. And the keyword here, entry, that is the variable name that we're saving the note entry to. Therefore, later, if we wanted to access the note entry we're on, uh, we just use the term entry, kind of like we were using I before when we were doing for loops. And to prove to yourself that this is actually doing what you think it is doing of looping through all the notes, go ahead, change the music over here a little bit and see if it changes the number of notes that's printed out. Let's, it's like we could try uh, two half notes like that. Highlight it and it prints out two half notes. Or even we can try a longer region like this of three measures with two half notes and hit run script. The output six different times. So now that we've looped through every single note in the region, let's go ahead and actually start changing the note heads in each region. So we're going to type out the following text. So local, remember that's defining a variable, a highest note equals entry. Remember entry being this entry up here, entry calc highest note. And we're going to give that a nil. And then on the new line, local, note head equals finale dot fc note head mod like that what this is doing is it's giving you the highest note in the note head selection so for instance if we had a chord over here like that it would actually give us the note entry for the d uh, rather than every single once and then the note head this is just the note head modifications which will allow you to just create a generic note head that we're then going to save onto the highest note so now that we have the generic note head template. Let's first clear all the defaults out. So note head erase at lowest note and then note head erase at highest note. And again, that's just clearing all the defaults uh, for the specific note head object. And then we want note head custom custom char equals 192. Now what this is saying, we want to change this to a custom character uh, to be the one that's at index number 192. In this case, that is the X note head. Then on the next line, note head dot resize equals 280. Why 80? Well, because from my experience, the X note head by default is a bit large, so 80 makes it look more like the surrounding notes. And then finally, we want to save this note head that we just created in the highest note. Save at highest note, just like that. This is totally understandable if you didn't follow everything or how I exactly got everything and knew what to write in here. We're going to get to that. But this is the general code that you can use to change all the notes in a region. So let's go over here and we can highlight the region and hit run script. And you can see these are all X's. Now on the chord, it only changes the top note because we specifically said to calculate the highest note. But other than that, it changes every single note head in the region. And if we were to change this to another note head like 191, it changes that all here. So now that you typed out a working script, what do you want to do next? So let's go over here and do some homework and some practice problems to make sure you actually understand what is going on over here. So challenge number one is make the resulting note heads smaller. So Remember we use size 80? Uh, why don't you try a different size to make it smaller? Next is trying to make the resulting note heads larger than they were before. Then you want to change the character of the notes. Just find another character and see if you can change it to that shape. And then try rewriting the codes. That way it changes both the highest notes and the lowest notes to be this character. This is the most tricky one. And if you can figure out how to make the lowest note head work, you have everything you need. That's making the note heads smaller, making the note heads larger, changing the character of the notes, and then making the lowest note head change instead of the highest note, and trying to make them both change. And to help you along with that, I'm creating a couple footnote videos that I am linking to in the description that will help you out with this. And they are, well, what is an algorithm in code? Because we've been coding now, and coding algorithms are really important, but what exactly is it? And then for those of you who wanted to know what the specific keys and pairs and values in the Lua for loop that we looked at originally. There's another video on that. And then what does each entry saved really mean? We saw each entry saved right here, but what is that actually doing behind the scenes? And then why does each entry saved include rests? Like if we notice, you know, you'd expect it for only to be three 
notes printed out, but really there's going to be five because it includes rests. So why does it include rests? And finally, how did I actually know to use 192 as the character for the specific X's? And again, all these videos are going to be in the description below. Next time, we're going to be doing all that and trying to change the character of the note based on the pitch. It's going to be another really exciting video, and I hope to see you all there.